Hey guys, today we're going to show you how you can debug things in Docker or you know just basic, some basic debugging and troubleshooting techniques. Um, so th there's there's more than what we're going to show you in this video. We're going to try to cover a bunch of real quick practical things that you can use to debug a Docker container. So um, let's take a look here at what we have on the system right now. Docker ps-a. So here we have uh, we have one container test one two three, um, and we can see it's it's running the nginx image and it is exposed on port 80 on the host system right so docker logs you can say docker logs test one two three specify the container name and you can see the logs for this container so that's the first thing you're you're going to want to know how to do now beyond that you can also use a dash f to follow the logs kind of like a tail dash f S similar functionality here so logs dash f and it's going to it's going to basically show you the logs but it's going to continuously tail the logs and show you anything new that appears in the logs so let's say if a client um if a client um like i'm going to bring another terminal over here logged into the same host and we're going to run wget so this is going to query the nginx server and watch as i run this as the client connects you see the log moved in the background that's the nginx log on that container moving so as client requests come in right we can see the log is moving in the background that's us tailing the log right so anyways we're gonna we're gonna get out of there control c to get out and let's see what else do you want to look at so you could also if you're looking at logs you can just grep for errors grep dash i error and you see there's no errors there right um yeah so no errors no warnings you, you you, you could grep for whatever you want. So just the ability to grep for things, just another quick tip there. Um, kind of an obvious thing, but uh, th there you have it. Now, another thing that's gonna help troubleshooting or debugging a container, normally you don't get a shell on a container. Normally containers just run, the application runs inside it and you don't log in. And if you wanna change something, you would destroy the container and recreate it after updating it. So normally that's how a container works in fraud. But if you do wanna debug something, you can get a shell on the container. And the, I think my, my favorite way to do this is Docker exec so you run docker exec dash it and the name of the container test one two three and run bash so this way you can get a bash shell on the container and there we go so um you can you know view files and the, i think the ps command yeah, the ps command is not even installed because it's a pretty minimal installation but you can view files in the container you could actually look at the logs directly like this and you could actually look at the access in the error log right access log i don't i don't know do we have the cat command on here yeah so we we, we do um let's see error anyways yeah so you you, you can look at things on the host <clears throat> and Let's see what 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 else. So let's get out of here. You can type. You can just type exit to get out of that, and the container will stay up and running. So you see that container is up and running. Now another way you can get a shell on the container um, is to run Docker attach and the container name one two three. So this will attach us to the output of the container. And notice here, this does not give us a shell. Now some like the Ubuntu container by default will give you a bash shell. This one does not, and so because it's an Nginx image, it, it basically the main application that it runs is just Nginx, not a, a shell or anything else. That's gonna be basically the only process on this container. So you're basically by default just getting the output of that command. That's the one command running in here, and you're seeing the output from that command directly. Now, when you attach to a container, you, you can't just control C out of it or exit out of it or anything like that because it's gonna stop the container. Now you could if you want to stop the container, but what you do to get out of it is you type control, hold control and then type P and then let go of both of them, then hit control again and type Q and that will, that's the escape sequence that will disconnect from it. So first control P and then control Q, not all of them at once, not control P, Q all at once. So we're gonna check this and you see it's still up and running. So the other thing you can do is inspect the container. We're not gonna to look too, into too much detail here. I'm just gonna show you and say docker inspect 
test one, two, three, and there you can see all sorts of details about the container, network info, um, volumes, drivers, all sorts of great stuff. Everything you'd want to know about the container just by inspecting the container. So that, that's another good thing that you should be aware of. So um, let's see, what else do you want to cover? All right, another great one is top. So Docker top, top, and this will show you what's running on the system. So you can you see we actually do have more than a single process. We have some worker processes, but notice we don't have normally on a normal Linux system you'll have like hundreds of processes running at once. So within this container though, and on the host system we do right like on the host system you have um, like this right, or if you run top on the host system you have all of that right. So in the container you only have these these processes and one of them is the main engine nginx process and the others are just worker processes right the master and the worker processes so another thing we could show you is um let's see so you can do other things like you can override the entry point i'm not going to actually do this but um so that that's the you can override the entry point of a container when you create it like this so specify entry point shell if you wanted a shell, and this would be like the, the image name. You could do that. I'm not going to do that in this video. And another thing you could do is specify parameters for an application when you start up a container like this. Now check the link in the description for more info on doing this. Um, if you want to copy and paste any of these commands I'm doing right here. Now you can also pause and unpause a container. Um, pause like this and if you want to unpause it unpause the container like that so let's actually just try this pause and there we go so we have a pause container and let's try unpausing it And so no, no real change in the output there. In any case, I'm not going to look further into that right now. Um, last thing I want to show you for this video is Docker history. So you can say Docker history, and you can say test one, two, three, four, basically your container name and no such image. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is for the image rather. So that that's my mistake. Um, let's see here. Nginx. So if you want to look at the history of the image, you, you can look into that just to see how it was built and what changes were made to the image, stuff like that. So you know, th this is basically how this image was created and stuff that was done to it. So this is one way you can dig into an image that is used for a particular container, um, not in the container itself. So that, that was me um, yeah, do, doing that wrong when I typed the container name for at first. So in any case, that's the last thing I wanted to show you, Docker history, look at the history of an image. and. Um, yeah, this is just a bunch of different um, different tools you could use in different situations to give you more information to debug or you know troubleshoot in a container. That's basically everything I wanted to cover for today. I feel like this is a little bit more dis disorganized of a video, a bunch of disparate things all just cobbled together. But I, I feel like this this is hopefully somebody watches this and comes out um, feeling like they've learned something or, or like this was some useful information. And uh, that's basically everything I wanted to show you about this for today. All right, so hopefully you found this video useful and um, you know you might want to give me a thumbs up. Also, you want to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more videos like this and we have a ton of other great tech related content. We cover a wide variety of things, everything from like Linux to servers, hardware, software, electronics, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, cryptocurrencies, um, you, know, you know, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, all sorts of great stuff you're not gonna wanna miss out on, robots, um, programming, coding, all that sort of great stuff. Um, you know, anything DevOps or software developer related, a lot, lot of Linux stuff. So if you don't want to miss out on that stuff and you want your YouTube feed to be all that much better, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss, miss out on the, the great content we have coming up after this. You might want to also check out some of our existing content too. Also, hit the uh, little bell icon, otherwise YouTube won't let you know when we do come out with new videos and you don't want to miss out on those. And um, also leave a comment down below if you know something that I don't know or if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say, not just for me, but for the next person who watches this video, um, definitely leave a comment down below. And that is about it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.